<laughs> Hello boys and girls, and this is a bit of a different video because Arsenal have made a sign-in. <laughs> now, I didn't manage to get a video together for Matty Ryan. My apologies to that, but that one come out of the blue. But uh, this video is not about him, unfortunately, for all of you that did want to see one about him. Um, but listen, I will say that, um, you know, welcome to Arsenal, Matty Ryan. He's going to be, you know, cover for Burn Leno if needed. And I feel a little bit better and um, that I can sleep well at night, knowing that if Leno does come out of the side, we haven't got Alex Renison going in goal. But anyway, this video is about Martin Odegaard because it's official. He is an Arsenal player on loan, we know. But um, he is now an Arsenal player from Real Madrid. And this is a signing that's got quite a few people excited. Now, we do need to be cautious. We do need to remember that he's still a young lad. And we do need to remember that um, despite his unbelievable talent, he's um, not the finished article. And um, he's going to have to come to Arsenal and hit the ground running. Now, this does take away a bit of the pressures on the likes of Emil Smith-Rowe. Um, and it's another young lad that can come into the sides and try and to, you know, create what we're trying to create. Um, we need an attacking player. January is always a difficult month. And the reason why this signing makes sense is because with teams having players that Arsenal may want, they know we need someone. So instantly the price gets bumped up. You look at Buendia, for example, at Norwich. They're fighting to get back into the Premier League. They're, you know, one main player that's, you know, the hot property, shall we say. Um, they don't want to get rid of him. And they're looking at it and saying, you know what, if you really want him, 40, 50 million pounds. You're not going to pay 40, 50 million pounds. That's not his price. So, you know, all the aces are in their hands, so to speak. But with this being loan and everything else, it's a win-win. You know, if it doesn't work, he goes back to Madrid. If it does work, then you can maybe try and negotiate a further 12-month deal. Um, maybe with the option to, you know, buy the player. It's very obvious that... You know, he's not really going to get much time while Sinadine Sedan is at the club. Um, but this is a young lad that's, you know, been thrust into the limelight since around about the age of 15. Um, he's even been to Arsenal's training ground as a 15-year-old. Arsene Wenger invited him to show him around the club because we were interested in... Um, in trying to take him and he had all the clubs across Europe that you can think of interested in his signature um, and he opted for Real Madrid um, he is an attacking midfielder kind of a number 10 number 8 and can drift wide left footed um, gonna give you some of his statistics as well um, I cannot pronounce the name of the club where he was playing in Norway. Um, Strumgosset, I'm not 100, I've never even heard of him, apologies for that, but, um, you know, that's where he was playing his senior football. Um, he was also, you know, in the youth teams there from 2009 to 2014. Um, and then when he got his move to Real Madrid, um, of course, he was at the, you know, reserve side of Real Madrid, under 23s, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's like the Real Madrid Castilla. Uh, but I remember initially there were arguments over him playing in, you know, the reserves because he was training all the time in the first team. And they couldn't get the best out of him in the under 23s because they couldn't train with him as he was with the first team but what's the point in training with the first team when you're not going to be playing so that's where the arguments you know started 2015 
Um, he did make his senior Real Madrid uh, debut and he is actually the youngest ever player in the history of Real Madrid. Um, and then like with most youngsters, um, you know, if you're not getting much game time, especially at a club like Real Madrid, and at them times as well, when the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo and that were there, it's difficult, isn't it? Um, so he went on loan. Uh, Heron Veen was the first one. Um, 38 appearances for them. And then he went to Vitesse Arnhem. 31 appearances for them. And then his last loan was Real Sociedad. Um, and there were 31 appearances in there. And he played really well at Sociedad. And I see a lot of his performances uh, when watching La Liga. And um, yeah, he's a very, very good talent. And everybody was led to believe that he was going to go back to Sociedad. Um, apparently the deal was in place. It was all ready. It was all done. But then Arsenal came out of nowhere and um, it made him think twice and he had to go away with his family and his representatives and discuss it as to what he was going to do. And um, he decided on Arsenal and that was the you know next step in his development and what he wanted to do. Um, there's also rumours as well that Real Madrid put a block on Real Sociedad, um, you know, taking him again. Because they're one of the teams that are in contention for Champions League places. So they didn't want to strengthen a rival, as they say. Um, in terms of his international um, football, um, he's got 25 caps for Norway. So he's well established as an international footballer now. Um, 18 caps for the under-21s um, in Norway. And he is so highly regarded. Um, what we can say about him, he is a modern attacking midfielder. We won't say a number 10 because they've had to evolve over the years. A number 10 plays kind of a number 8 as well. Um, and dependent on whether they drift right or left, you kind of look at a number 11, which would be the left-hand side, and a number 7, which is the right-hand side. If you're talking about numbers in old reference, because that's where they used to play in those positions. Um, so you've had to evolve as an attacking midfielder. Um, but he's um, a very attack-minded one. Um, diminutive, quick-footed. He's got natural balance. His left foot is, is real good. He's got pace as well. That is key. And that could be very key for... Um, the Premier League, his shooting power as well is so good. And um, I think this all just makes sense for Arsenal. In all honesty, I think it makes sense. There's going to be a lot of scepticism. There's going to be a lot of people questioning whether this could be a Denis Suarez, for example. Nobody knows. You could go out and buy somebody that's proven and 50, 60, 70 million pound, Nicola Pepe, and it don't work. But then you could have something like this where you get him on loan and he hits the ground running. His natural ability is what sets him apart. So that's what we've got hope for. Because if he can, you know, come into the sides and, you know, hit the ground running and do what we know he can, then it's only going to make us stronger. Um, it'd be annoying, though, if he does hit the ground running, tears it apart. And then Madrid say, yeah, thanks, and take him back. I suppose that's the one risk that you have with these short-term loan deals. But the one thing that we can look at is that Arsenal and Real Madrid do have a really good relationship. Um, and you can go right back to the days of uh, Nicola and Elka going to Madrid, to Meza Ozil coming across over to us. Um, Danny Sabayas, of course, is a player that's on loan already from Madrid. So when you look at it, you hope that maybe something could be put in place if that does happen. But um, at the end of it, if it doesn't work, we can just say, there you go. Thank you. And then we can concentrate in the summer on, you know, bringing in a permanent, you know, top, top, top player. It could be Martin Odegaard. We don't know. But um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. I can't wait to see how he does in the Premier League. Um and I can't wait to see 
you know, how he links up with all the kind of players that are around him. Youth as well, which could be key for him. 22 years old and you're going to have the likes of Emil Smith-Rowe, Bakayo Saka, uh, Martinelli. Good players. And then behind him, he's going to have the likes of Thomas Partey. So it's a good side to be coming into. And um, despite our league position and form and everything else. Well, I say form, but our form of late is very good. Um, last five games with a, you know, second in the informed table only Manchester City are ahead of us so um, that bodes well and uh, we're going to see what happens but for now Martin Odegaard is an Arsenal player and um, I for one cannot wait to see him in an Arsenal shirt and I cannot wait to see how he adapts to the Premier League and whether he can hit the ground running and whether he can be that big spark that we've been missing but we will wait and see. Um, if you're new around it, do make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you smash a like on this video. And I will see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.